Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Toyer from the Kaisel. I'm your host, as always, Rabbi David Katz. And we are here with... The Ari Lewis Show. As always, as well. All right, we're here. It was, uh... It's a different state of affairs than, I, than, than we've had in a long time. I'll tell you why. A couple of weeks ago, the Ari Lewis Show took a hiatus for one week. That's right. And Please. I came and I learned. I kept up the fort, and it was momish freezing. I, I literally had to leave after about 45 minutes of learning the Ramdu. I couldn't take it. Hmm. And I thought, is this the end of the Ari Lewis, uh, Ari Lewis show with doing this until summer? Because I was freezing. So we came back the, last week and we had a good round. Mm -hmm. And today in Modine, the holy city of Modine, quasi, right? Uh, it was cold, it was dark, when it was, shouldn't have been dark, and it was very rainy. So I thought today, here we go, we're going to film inside. It's going to be a goofy time around. I even wore my winter boots. I thought about bringing a poncho. <laughs> and lo and behold, it's nice. It's beautiful. There's no wind. It's quiet. There's plenty of room, plenty of light. I think things are okay in the universe. What do you think, Ari Lujo? It's really nice out. And these lights are pretty cool. That's it. So it ended up being different than I had expected. And that leads us to what are we talking about? Um, during this week of classes online, we were doing, what were we doing? It was either the women class or Samson class. Usually they intertwine. They're Monday and Tuesday nights. And I got to where I was talking about, uh, in the back of my mind, I'd remembered the Ramchal's commentary on Sefer Ruth uh, because it talks about Sarya bin Don. Now, right now, you're saying, who's Sarya bin Don? Don't you worry. That's going to be the th thrust of the entire show today. But before I explain who that is, I wanted to explain it online. Um, thinking I would find it very quickly and in the end I was searching for about half an hour where sorry had been done and I found it but as I as I skimmed through looking for this one little nugget to make my class go I realized that you know you grow in learning over the years and the last time I had looked at, at Sefer Ruth commentary of the Ramchal I knew that it was very Gary right a lot of gear stuff I mean it says gear every other every other word right but I thought I understood it. But as we all know, the gear learning develops every day more and more. We discover more about gear. So as I was teaching, I, I said, man, this is, this is nuts. If I, as I was you know, in the back of my mind, I'm scanning and saying, this is incredible. Let's make this the class from the wall this week. So Ari Lewis Show, we are learning the Ramchal, say for Ruth, with a special emphasis on answering the question, who is Sarya Ben Don and what is his role? Now you should be asking me, who, what, when, where, how, why? Yeah, I've heard that name before. So let me give you the background, 411, on who's sorry you've been done, and then we'll get into it. Yeah? I have a, a lot of pages of notes. Um, they're not all important notes. I just took notes as a guide to get me through this year. And the, the rum call is about eight and a half pages. So as I, as I remember it, it'll come out, and that'll be the class. Have you ever heard of the Zohar HaKadosh? Sure. You've heard of the Zohar? Yeah. Okay, so there's, we all know the Zohar. One place in the Zohar, one, is there's a little Mishnah, it's all Mishnayas in the Zohar, and it's talking about the great men who have came or come from the tribe of Don. Have you ever heard of the tribe of Don? Sure. Where was the first time, or first place you can think of Cheshivas, of the tribe of Don? I know you know it. Rack your brain. I know you know this. Uh, you mean like where in the Chumash? Yeah, I didn't want. I don't want to throw you too much of a bone, but yeah. Well, I mean, there's the midrash about Kush who um, who killed Esau. Ah, so that's a good one. By the, the way, you, by, by his name is Chushim. Chushim. Sorry. And you know what Chushim spells if you mix up the letters? What's that? Mashiach. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that's where I was going. I knew I knew you know it. Everyone learns this in yeshiva. Chushim and Asif and Yaakov's blessing to Shevet Don, right? Uh, Don will be a viper on the path and all this and that. Uh, for your salvation, Hashem, do I hope? Right. We all know that. And then we say, what was Yaakov Avinu thinking when he blessed Don? Ah, Yaakov saw the Mashiach and he blessed Don. We say, but wait a second, I thought Mashiach comes from Yehuda. And now you're saying Don. Ah, but he saw Shimshin Hagibor. He saw Samson. And Samson is kind of messianic in his, right, everything about him. And Yaakov erred and thinking that that was Mashiach. We know that whole story. Uh, yada, yada, dee, da, 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 da. 
Okay, so that's when we found out that Don is a shtickle superhero like. And then we opened up Shoftim, we read about Shimshin, and we said, wow, this guy was pretty fantastic. But he didn't bring Gula, and he didn't bring Mashiach, so then we say, eh, forget Simpson. And then we're, we're stuck with confusion. Then there's another, just go lateral with me, Ari, okay? A little lateral move. Have you ever heard of Yehuda or Judah? Sure. Okay. Do you remember in the Chumash, when Yehuda met his good friend Hiram, or Hiram? Uh, with with Tamar so. and the oh, whole yes, Adumai, yes. whatever that was, and yes. he met his friend uh, Hiram. Okay. And, all, and it's, it's Lushin that he was a friend of Yehuda. Right. And then Shlomo had the same friend, but a long time later, named Hiram and David. And there's an iteration through the whole Torah of this Hiram. So the Arizal says in his Perush on the, on the Tanakh that there is a, a, a pattern of Yehuda and Don. And the Midrash calls it Mashiach ben Yehuda and Mashiach ben Don. Where do we get that from? Have you ever heard of the Mishkan? Sure. And you know who built the Mishkan? Bitzalel, from the tribe of Yehuda, and the guy whose name we can never pronounce because Art Scroll spells it very weird, from the tribe of Don. Oh, I don't know. I oh, give yeah, Bob. Uh, whatever it is, Art Scroll butchers that one, and I never got it ever since. Right. But we all know he's there, and he's from Don. So the reason in, in the in his Perush, his Kabbalistic Perush, explains that the concept of Bitzalel is to make the Panemius, the Shechina, Gila Shechina of the of the Mishkan, and this aspect of Don, the tribe of Don, family of Don makes the outer outer rim or the revealed aspect of the Mishkan. And he says, so too, in the third temple, Mashiach ben David, you heard that guy? Mashiach sure. ben David, will build the third temple, may it be soon. And he's helped by Saria ben Dan. Now we know it has to be ben Dan, Yehuda and Hiram, uh, Shlomo and Hiram, right? David and Hiram. And Betzalel and the, the, the Danite. So in the future, there's a Messiah. And Messiah is helped building the base of Mikdash by this fellow from Dan. Come into the Zohar. Now, to go full circle, you remember our, our bracha from, Yehu, from, from Yaakov, Dan. And the Zohar, I forget exactly where it is. I can give you a source later on. Um, it says that four mighty men will have arisen from the tribe of Don. I don't remember all of them ball pet. One of them is Samson. One of them is the Saria character. One of them is, I think, Ira, the friend of David. Right. And there's another one I never remember who it is. But this, this, this bracha from Yaakov is like a thing. There's this thing. And it says, for your salvation, Hashem, do I hope for, right? The Ramchal has 515 tefillahs in a book that ends each tefillah with that phrase, for your salvation, Hashem, do I hope. And it's this concept of Sarya ben Dan. So the Zohar says there that when Sarya ben Dan appears, then wait for Mashiach ben Ephraim because he's not very far away. That right. sounds interesting. I never heard of Mashiach ben Ephraim. Never heard of Mashiach ben Ephraim. You've heard of Mashiach ben Yosef. Yeah. So there's an alternate name for Mashiach ben Yosef. Mashiach ben Ephraim. Okay. Now, I'm glad you asked that, because the whole basis of this shear is in these terminologies. We are going to say, by the end of the class today, that there is an aspect of Mashiach ben David called Mashiach ben David. But there's another aspect of this Davidic Messiah called Ben Yishai. Have you ever heard of the prophet Isaiah? Sure. And I forget which chapter. I think 41, 42, or unless it's in one in chapter 9. I think it's 41, 42 around there. The stump of David will grow, a, will, will, will come back with a, uh, like a tzemach, right? I forget the exact question. And they call it, the, the, uh, the, I think it's the stump of Yishai. And then there's another midrash about Yerevan ben Navat, who was a Mashiach and Yosef type, who came from Ephraim. And that's where we get also this terminology Mashiach ben Ephraim. He's the tikkun of Yervan ben Avad. And what did Yervan ben Avad say? God, I want to be your Messiah. 
And our God says, oh, good, I'll make you the Messiah. I'm paraphrasing. And he says, that's cool. Okay, I'm the Messiah, good. But let me ask you a question. Um, what's with, I forget how this goes exactly, but he says, like, what's with David? <laughs> and he says, um, David's in the front. Ben Yishai Barosh. And Yervin Menavar says, I don't want any part of this. Yalla, my, yalla, kultuf. And he, that's it. He gave, his, he gave it up. He did not want to share it with David. So in this discourse today from the Ramchal, we are going to refer to an aspect of Mashiach ben David called Mashiach ben David. Yeah? But there's another aspect more inclined towards what we call the Melech Mashiach. And we call that here Ben Yishai Barosh. Because there's lots of terms for Mashiach. We've already said Mashiach ben Yehuda, Mashiach ben Dan, Sarya ben Dan, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben Ephraim. There's something called Mashiach ben Menasha. There's something called the Goyal, the Goyal Tzedek. All these terms, all through the Midrash. And then the Kabbalah takes up the terms from the Midrash. Just like Geir has a billion concepts and terminologies, these terminologies are not to say that there's 5,000 messiahs. It's to say that there's different aspects and different times, different functions and different stages. The final stage is called the King Messiah, Melech HaMashiach. The Vilna Gon writes in Kula Tor, the beginning of the Gula is called Mashiach Arishon, the first Messiah. That's already, that's, that's already a name of the Messiah. But then you can call it Mashiach Ben Yosef. But then in, in Yirmiyahu, in Perik Lamed Aleph, it's always Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim. So the Zohar coins the term of Mashiach Ben Ephraim. And then you ask, the Ramchal answers, why do we sometimes say Mashiach Ben Ephraim? But we, but Mashiach Ben David, uh, we don't say, uh, well, how's it go? We don't, we don't call him, ah, we don't call him Mashiach Ben Yehuda. It's more Mashiach Ben David. But you see what I'm saying? Why do you call it this but not that? And the Ramchal gives those answers. And as I usually promise you, if you, if you want to get into that, next week, God willing, we can do that. Sounds good. All right, but I don't want to waste the whole shear today on that. But I do assure you, the Ramchal explains why we call him Yosef and Ephraim. Today, we'll get into a little bit of it, but the real, real answer is in Sefer Kinas Hashem Tzfa'os by the Ramchal. Okay? All right. So now, in Kol Ator is part of a set of the Vilna Gon, uh, his base Medrash. There's not a proper name for the set. I'm translating it now. One of the books is called Midrash Shlomo. Have you ever heard of Zionism? Sure. Where does Zionism come from? Well, different sources have different explanations. Because they're wrong. It came from the Vilna Gon That's what in said. the year 1740. Right. And you say, but the Vilna Gon didn't like the Hasidim. Really? Then why did the students of the Vilna Gon find the Yishuv in Israel that still exists today with the cooperation of the Talmudim of the, of the Vilna Gon along with the Talmud and the Balatanya, uh, Talmud and Baal Shem Tov, and Talmud and Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Breslev. So from Europe, all those students came over on very difficult journeys, and where we are today, they established this. There was a small continuum of people living in the land that were Jews, but the, the, the building beyond the walls of the old city, they called it, that was called the Yishuv, the settlement. Uh, and that was founded by the Graz teachings and, and Ashkafas and endorsed by the Hasidim who were called the Nilvim to the students of the Graz who were called the Perushim and here we are, we're sitting in, in, their, in their thing. Now, they ran out of money in the late 1800s and that's when Herzlism and Germany and the Rothschilds all got on board and that is not a conspiracy theory. If you read the Her diaries of Herzl, he literally hand wrote letters to Rothschild asking for an exorbitant amount of money and he got it. And what is the proof? We're sitting in that, in the fruit of that right now. Hmm. So, uh, secularism took over Zionism, but Zionism was created by Haredim, i.e. the Quran is based Midrash. In, in that uh, philosophical movement, there was the, the writings of what actually happened. They came, they stayed, they built. Then they built their ideology based on Torah. So the ideology became called Midrash Shlomo, which we have translated, and the, the, the Torah of that became Kol Hator, which is, in essence, they were starting the Geula, and the, the Torah that starts Geula is called Kol Hator. You can say, well, that's a very nice opinion, but there's other opinions. No, there's not. They actually started the Geula. If I had a grenade and I pulled the pin and it blew up, you would say, I started it because I pulled the pin out of the grenade. Right? Right. 
those guys in 1740, which was 6 a.m. on the cosmic clock, they started Gula. This is Gula. It is happening. It's not done. It's unfolding. But they kicked it off. So the Torah behind that was is embedded in Kol HaTor. Okay? In Kol HaTor, which is all about the Mashiach HaRishon, the Mashiach who starts it off. In every generation, there's a Mashiach Ben Yosef that starts it off again. The perpetuated. And the Mashiach Ben Yosef above, in its sealess, the Shaykh to the Sphira Yisod, we call that Metatron, the Tat. And Metatron's job as Mashiach Ben Yosef Shomayla is to bring down the leader of the Erev Rav. We call him Armilis. And they actually say that the Iker Koyach of Armilis in the Samech Mim is right where you're sitting. You mean here at the Kotel? In this plaza at the Kotel. The gate of the Shara Yerushalayim, right here, is the Iker Koyach against Kul. Um, not to say that these nice people are doing that. But the koyach, to prevent it, obviously to prevent us from going up and building the temple. Which you see, no one right now is willing to go up. Much like the water that hits the ocean, uh, hits the, the land, it doesn't threaten to invade, right? Right. So right here, you can imagine, this is like a bank, and the river's going, the sea's coming in, and there's a barrier stopping going up. That's much like the sea, uh, the, the sand, that stops the sea from coming onto the high ground. That is the job of Metatron. Metatron is aided by Mashiach and Yosef Tachtoin, the lower one, the, the physical goof of, of Mashiach, whoever that may be, right? And there's another character named Saria bin Don. Saria bin Don's job is to bring down Armilus and the Erevrav and to aid in the in the in the Messiah. Okay? Now, 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet that know anything about Saria bin Don would know it from those three sources. Kolator, that one Zohar, and the Arizal. It's barely written anywhere, okay? And the, the Arizal one is very uh, hidden. Uh, I never saw anybody quote it. I, I have it at home, so I know it exists. The Zohar one is a little bit vague. And Kolator, for people that learn Kolator, they know there's a, a Sarya Ben Don character. So what, you can imagine my amazement when I got into Oitzris Ramchal, and I'm skimming through, doing my gear work, and I see many mentionings of Sarya Ben Don. So I'm saying, wow, that's a jackpot, right? How many often is it you find sorry have been done? All right, so my, my job for today was to go in through the parish of the Ramchal and bring out this sorry have been done, which is new Chaymer, new to me, as the Ramchal is explaining. Now remember, our Ramchal is one of our guys because he is a very Geula kind of guy. So by now, we've been speaking for 20 minutes nearly. Um, and as I said, I have extensive notes. So I'm going to now paraphrase from memory what I can from the notes. Right with me? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Have you ever heard of Moshe Rabbeinu? Sure. That's right. Moshe Rabbeinu, they say you know, Moshe Mashiach, Moshe's Melech, as in uh, Melech Yishurin. So again, in, in, this is not in chronological order. The Ramchal explains there's an aspect of Moshe Rabbeinu splitting the sea with his staff. Right? We know that Nachshin Ben Amidav, when he went in, but Moshe stood there and split the sea, right? Every kid in Cheder learns Moshe split the sea, right? Sure. But there's an aspect of Moshe Rabbeinu, and there's an aspect of Moshe Barosh, right? Like he stood there with his staff and split the sea. Like, like thinking about it? Whatever. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying yes or that. Okay. Just, just a concept. Okay. There's a concept of Moshe was up there and everyone was like watching what he's gonna do. Okay. That is what he's calling the the aspect of Melech. He was in the front, he's the king, King Yeshurun, right? That's Moshe Melech. Then, in every generation, there's something called the train Mashiachin, the two messiahs. Who are the two messiahs? Mashiach ben Yosef right, and, and, and Mashiach ben David. Yeah. So, what the Ramchal is saying is that when you speak of Mashiach ben Yosef as, a, as, a, as a, an alone entity, as if there's something called Mashiach ben Yosef, you with me? Yeah. That's called Mashiach ben Yosef. But when you speak of Mashiach ben Yosef in conjunction with Mashiach ben David, i.e. the train Mashiachin, i.e. a right side and a left side, that's, now I don't know if this is a claw guddle, but the Ramchal uses it as a claw guddle. So I'm gonna use it as a claw guddle, as, as far as this year goes. Because I never saw the grog into it this way, but for the sake of this year, you call it at least Lafib Shuto, 
The left side of, of holiness is called Mashiach and Ephraim, Tafka Ephraim. And the right side, Mashiach and David, Tafka David. Right? And then you have what's called Nishmat Moshe. The soul of Moshe is Mislavish in this entity called Mashiach. There's different words, different aspects, different um, apparatuses. Okay? Right. So when you have Moshe Melech Moshe in the front, you have what is called behind, and following, coming behind, the train Mashiachin. Right? You had Moshe with his hands in prayer, and who you have with them? Ar Aaron and Chor. Remember that? In the Chumash? Sure. So you see the concept. So now, I'm going to oscillate from here on out, okay? Have you ever heard of Sefer Ruth? Sure. Okay, who are the superstars in Sefer Ruth? Uh, Ruth, Naomi. Ruth, Naomi. Uh, uh, Orpah. Orpah. You could say... Machlin and Killian and right. Eli Melech. Yeah, and that's it. about it. And there's Zakain the of the gate. Right? Yeah. That's pretty much it. So what the Ramchal is doing, he's saying that the that this this mice that, I'm calling it a Misa, because he's the Shmuel Navi is documenting the Misa. Eli Melech, he is the guy in front. He's the leader. He is Moshe Rabbeinu. Not literally. Allegorically, he represents the Moshe aspect of this time. You got that? Yeah. Now, what was Moshe's job? He was the husband to the Shekhinah. He was like Mizavig, Miyachid with the Shekhinah. We call that Naomi. Then there's Moshe Vitrain Mashiach. We call that Machlin and Kilian. Which, by the way, they are Gilgulim of Peretz and Zerach. So there's a whole, and then there's the sons of Yehuda that die. So now they come through, and eventually they die. And Ruth and Boaz have a child, which became the father of Yishai, which brought us David. That child is the messianic flow all the way back from Shem, Tamar, and Yehuda. And it finally reaches its apex in Tikkun here. All right, so we have Moshe Elimelech, Naomi and the Shekhinah, Machlin and Kilian, Mashiach and David, Mashiach and Ephraim. Literally? No. Allegorically. It's, it's called being in the Bechina. We say there's something called like Bechinas of Mashiach and Yosef. So it's the, it's the Bechina, or the Vilna Gon calls it Beturia. Turia is like a fraternity. If you were to say, who are the greatest heavyweights of all time? Muhammad Ali, George Foreman. Would you say Mike Tyson? Yeah, so you would say Mike Tyson is in the Datoria of great heavyweights. You got that concept, Datoria? Yeah. Okay. Well, you would say more like, uh, but you could say group like he's more like Sonny Liston or Jack Dempsey. I'm saying that there's uh, there's something called leadoff hitters, great leadoff hitters in baseball. Sure. Ricky Henderson was one of them. Yeah. Uh, Bob Jones was another one. Okay, yeah. whoever Bob Jones was. So today there's a great guy. He hits 600. Can you believe that? His batting average is 600. Yeah. He's a leadoff hitter, right? His right. Bob, Bob Schmelowitz. You would say he is in the Toria of great leadoff hitters. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So Eli Melech is in the Toria of Nishmat Moshe, men who exemplified this, this ongoing cycle, as the Gra and many others explain. The soul of Moshe revisits every generation through the Talmudic Chachamim of the door. Was Eli Melech that? Yes, he was. So he is in the, the Gedir, in the Turiya of Moshe, Nishmat Moshe. There's something called the twin messiahs of every generation. You with me? Yep. That, that's, that's Machlin and Killian. When you see in the story Machlin and Killian, there you see the twin messiahs, Zerach and Peretz, Mashiach and David, Mashiach and Yosef, all the reiterations. Okay. Now, Naomi. You always have a Giloy Shechina, where there's Esther, Ruth, Naomi. There's always like the female, that you know, the, the Giloy Shechina aspect. All right, so right there, we're going to call that Naomi. Naomi represents the divine feminine, okay? Not literally. Right, okay. It, it just means, it, it's it's like we say that Zeranpin is akin to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not literally. It's attributes. Eli Melech dies. He dies. Moshe dies. Moshe died, the Ramchal says, being out in front. Elimelech died when he was leading the family into Moab. So you have the concept of Moshe and the two messiahs going into exile. Giloy Shechina is there. 
They're going to Moab, the land of Edom, from Eretz Yisrael, which is in famine. And you have this concept that you, if you want to call it one thing, it's called Moshe Barosh, or the King Moshe dies. And at that time, there was a lot of Gerim. A lot of Gerim were going on. You had a, it was a time of harvest, right? Ruth was harvesting, right? So there was a famine before all this, and they're going around, and the Jews go into exile, much like they were going in exile. And as it, as it says in Psachim 87b, why do the Jews go into exile? To Makabu Gerim. So why did they go to exile? Elimelech and Naomi. To Makabu Gerim. How do we know that? Because Dafka, that's how Ruth came into this holy picture, and that's what gave us David and Melech. So it's a microcosm, the whole story. So Elimelech dies. Machlan and Kilian marry their Gertoshav women, Orpah and Ruth. And then they die. So now you have Moshe is gone, the aspect of Moshe is gone. You have Naomi teaching the laws of Gerus, like Giloy Shechina. Malchus is called Gerd Sedek in the, in, the, in the Zohar. And then Makarving Ruth. And Orpah is the Gerim Grurim that return back to their land. Because the time of Gog and Magog is a test on the Gerim attached to Israel. And the insincere Ger, the Gerim Grurim, will go back to their land and say, we were never really Ger. Whereas the Ruth Ger says, my people, your people, your God, my God. So that's the true Ger, Ger Tzedek Nanju. And, and Naomi's teaching her that. So you see the Kesher between the Ger and Malchus, like Nefesh Agir. So now you have, in the story, Ruth is going to be in the field, harvesting and taking care of business, talking to Naomi, and there's this fellow named Boaz, who comes from the family of Elimelech. Now remember, Moshe's gone, correct? Right. So Moshe, the king in the front, is gone. And if, if before we had Boaz, you have the trained Mashiachin, Mashiach ben Ephraim, Mashiach ben David. Mashiach ben David in the front, Mashiach ben Ephraim in the back. Mashiach ben Ephraim is, is, is like a, a Dan type of character. He's going to be related to Sari ben Don in a minute. And what do we say about the tribe of Dan? They're always in the back collecting the, the, the fallen items in the encampment in the Bamidbar. So if before we get to Boaz... When you say back, you mean the literal back. Literal back. You know, okay. Yeah. When before we get to Boaz, if, if they could have brought Mashiach with these Gerim, then Ephraim would have been subservient to David, and we would have had this Mashiach ben David character. So it would have been... There's, there's a Pusik, I think it's in, in Yermiyahu. Uh, if, it's not a, if, if it's not a Pusik, it's a Chazal. The Ramchal brings it in Maimur Gula. Ephraim does the the Ratzon of David, and uh, I think and David does the word of Ephraim, something like that. And there's also another one that uh, Ephraim won't be jealous of Yehuda, and Yehuda won't hate Ephraim. I forget the exact Lushin. So it's that concept in that place and time. Ephraim moves under David. David leads the way. Mashiach and David brings the Gula, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Machlin and Killian died. And the Garim are there. Nothing happened. So now Moshe's out. Elimelech is gone. And the two messiahs are out and gone. Naomi's Hefker by herself. She's got this daughter-in-law, Ger, who wants to come in. And she was married to Machlin. And there's this Boaz. So the Ramchal is making a massive Kiddush. Boaz is the epitome of Sarya ben Don. Now, what is Sarya ben Don in this, in this aspect? Remember, Moshe in the front is gone. The, tra the train machine are gone. So now there's something called two Goalim, two redeemers. When Naomi orchestrates with Ruth to get with Boaz, and they approach the men of the uh, the elders of the gate. What does one of them say? I'm the one to redeem you. But if it's not me, 
There's somebody closer than I am. Remember that? Yeah, okay. If it's going to happen through Mashiach ben Yosef, because all that I describe with Moshe and David, that's if there's a Mashiach ben David. And what we're seeing from here in the Ramchal, the Vilna Gon, there's not going to be a Mashiach ben David at first. It starts this Aruta de Sata. It starts with a Mashiach ben Yosef. So we see that the ha there's always the Havamina, let it be Elimelech, let it be Mashiach ben David, let it start the right way, but it never does. And the Gerim are intrinsically involved. So if there's going to be a Gula from Mashiach ben Yosef, the Mashiach of the beginning, Mashiach ben Ephraim even, you want to like narrow it down. Mashiach ben Ephraim would redeem the Gerim on, on the location and the Jews. But the, the Messiah figure starts to feel this. And he, and he, and he says, no, I, I can't do it. Because he, it reminds him in the soul of Yerevan ben Nevat. And with Yerevan ben Nevat, it went very foul, very quickly, very wrong. I'm just trying to find the exact quote of that. So therefore, he can't do it. The Mashiach ben Ephraim character cannot do it. Again, because it's too much like Yervon ben Avat. Yeah? Yep. So, at that point, Boaz... Again, I'm just trying to find that source, if I can find it. Boaz, then, is, is, is the elected man to bring forth the redemption. And he is akin to Saria ben Don. So the, the, the framework that it exists is Eli Melech in the front, the, the Moshe aspect is dead, Nifter, and out of the out of the way. So then you have the Trey Mashiachin, gone. Mashiach ben Ephraim, too much like Yervan ben Nevat. Right? He, 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 he realizes to redeem Klai Yisrael is too much. So Saria ben Don is Boaz. Boaz is, is synonymous with Saria ben Don, synonymous with the, the Sar Seva Hashem. The general of Hashem's army, he his job is to bring out the Gerim. So when he is is the redeemer for Ruth, and they all these words like uh, go, I forget the exact term, but like Goel Anachi, like your redeemer, I am, I am your redeemer. So the the imagery painted in this depiction with Ruth wanting to be the, the God of Israel, attaching to Naomi, wanting redeemed. And Naomi's setting it up because she represents the Gilo Shechina. Boaz ate and drank and was happy and all these things. The, the Ramchal says that's the Torah that is the, the, for the Neshama that brings schus to Klai Yisrael. And his job is to never stop, never and with, to be with, without getting tired, always working to bring the Gula. That's called Saria ben Don. So when Boaz overpowers Klippa, basically, to get to Ruth, and they go, they, they bring her and him to the elders of the, of, the, of the gate, it says that Saria ben Don elevates the Mashiach ben Yosef El Yon. Right? That's what we said in Kol Torah, right? right? That the Mashiach ben Yosef and Saria ben Don elevate with Metatron to bring down Armelis. So who's Armelis? Gog. Who's Gog? He who attacks the Gerim uh, through the land of Israel. Um, they're all metaphor the same thing. So if you have a Gog in the end of days, and you have an Armelis in the, in the script, in the, in the writings, Boaz represents the hero that brought in Ruth and justified and validated the Gerim that were there that didn't run to the other, all the other lands at the time of the famine, but said, your God, our God, your people, my people. So if Boaz wouldn't have been there to validate Ruth, remember, she's bringing in the Zera of David. The seed of David's coming in through there. By him redeeming her and tireless, tirelessly redeeming her, validating her, she's kosher. Remember, because it's also a Havamina that it's illegal to bring in a Moabite woman in Israel. Yeah, right. But what's the Kiddush? Moabite man, not a Moabite woman. So Boaz, by knowing the Torah of the Ger, allows him to do what's called the Geula Sager. Redemption of the Gare. By doing the evil and all these things with Ruth, and they have a child, 
which ends up being the, uh, the, the lineage to David. And then Naomi raises that child. Or it's like a child to Naomi, they say. It says in the end, here, Ella, the Omas Oilam, that acknowledge and praise the goodness of the children of Israel and also their Redeemer. See, this is this ends up being a, a redemption for the Omas Oilam, the Chassidi Omas Oilam, the Gary, Gary Etzedek, all the all, every kind of gear in the world. And it makes it, it makes them very strong. And, he, and, and the, 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 the Boaz, sorry, had been done, wasn't quiet, didn't relax, didn't stop. Baruch Hashem Asher Lo Hishvis Lecha Goyel Ayom Vayikra Shemo Yisrael Kashem Hagdolim Asher Ba'aretz By Boaz being the redeemer of Ruth it caused the name of the child to come back fulfilling the, the, the lineage from Shem and Yehud, Yehuda and Tamar and Peretz and Zerach and Machlid and Kilian all the way through to eventual David so Boaz brought that name, just the lineage of that name, all the way back. Boaz becomes a guttel, bigger than he ever was. By doing that, in the merit of what he did it in, of redeeming Ger, then Israel recognized Gerim, and it was a Yeshua at that time for Gerim in the land of Israel. Remember, they were at the time, they were right here, the field around the base of Mitish, collecting. So it was, it was the, they see the judges of the time of the Shoftim, they brought Yeshua's to Klai Yisrael, like Samson. Right? It's because there's a custom. It's written that way. So, Boaz was a judge. His name was Ivsim. One of the other names of Boaz is Ivsim. And this is what he did by redeeming the Ger. It brought Ruth in, which allowed there to be a David. And his name validated the whole thing. But it couldn't have come through Elimelech, who was a Moshe king in the front, or the twin messiahs, Meshach and Ephraim, Meshach and David. What it became was Saria is synonymous, now listen to this, with that term called Ben Yishai Barosh. Remember, Yervan ben Nevat can't handle Mashiach ben David. So the Mashiach ben Ephraim aspect can't come in. So you have to have this idea of Ben Yishai Barosh. So even though Boaz wasn't first with Elimelech, now that they're gone, who was in the front? Boaz. He's the guy. That's called Ben Yishai Barosh. And that's synonymous with the Melech Mashiach. So when the Kula Tor speaks of Sarya Ben Don bringing down Armelis, i.e. Gog, i.e. that which attempts to kill the Gerim. And that's the Erev Rav. Then you have a Mashiach Ben Yosef. But that's the, 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 the process of that first Redeemer before Boaz. That was Mashiach ben Yosef, rejecting the bishop. He says, there's somebody closer than me, and that's Sariah ben Don. Then you just have what's called Sari ben Don, and then you have ben Yishai Barosh. And which is interesting, I'll close on this note. Kola Tor, if you rearrange the letters of Hator, it's, it's ha, like Harut, it's Ruth. Right? Hator is like the, so what is Tor? The turtle dove. Rearrange Tor, and it spells Rus. So very interesting. Anyways, that's the idea. Sariah ben Don is Mashiach ben David, the longest way possible, routed through Mashiach ben Yosef, the longest way possible, and routed through the Gerim, the longest way possible. In the end of days, the longest way possible. So the story of Ruth is a microcosm of what will be in the Mamish end of days. And they're gonna go through the Gerim Gorim we see happening, True Garam we see happening, land of Israel happening, we talk about Zionism. Then you're going to have Mashiach ben Yosef started in 1740, and we're trying today. And eventually, all the Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben Ephraim, the Nishmat Moshe will go away, and you're going to have Sariah ben Don, which is ben Yishai Barosh, and ultimately it's going to come down to Yervam ben Avad having tshuva on his neshama, as the Ramchal talks about it in Sefer Kinos Hashem, uh, Sefer Kinos Hashem Tva'os. And at the end of the day, the Vilna Gon, sorry, been done, the Zohar, sorry, been done, this, this relationship with the Gare and the Jew and Don and Yehuda. That's what we're witnessing, and Boaz was that. Mamish, take us out, Ari Lewis Show. God bless you, good night.